service to be a housekeeper forever? No, it is not. Then when will you not give me an answer as you promised? Just a little longer. I, I need to be sure. Well, how long, Mary? Until summer, I suppose. Until summer. And then you'll say autumn, and then Christmas. I've been very patient. What more must I do? I treat Thomas like my own son. You've been most kind. Please, don't think I'm ungrateful. I'm just not ready to think about such things. Then yet. when will you be ready? you will have to accept that. You have to think of the future. Thomas needs a father. I will press you no further for the moment. But if you keep this, well, I will take it to mean yes. I'm home now. Let it all go away. in the snow. We thought we'd never find anything, given up all hope, when suddenly out of the blue, we find a treasure. We found one boot with an hole in it. Yeah, but you never know. This morning we might look down and we might find the matching boot. It was five years ago, Dad. I don't know. You haven't got scrap in your heart. That's your trouble. What's that? I don't know. Don't look like a bomb.
on. He's waking up! Don't move, giant! Sorry. You're frightened of me. Of course you are. I must appear terrifying to you. So, so huge, monsters. Don't be frightened. Look, I'll, I'll whisper. Have you fallen from the heavens? You the man in the moon? I mean, where do you come from? I tell you what, Dad. Well, this could be the making of us. We're gonna be rich. <laughs> oh no! Here comes the army! Halt! Get away from it, you fools! Get away! It's a trap! It's not a man at all! It's a war machine filled with big enders! Get off it! Any minute now, they're gonna pull out! Look! I can assure you, sir, my intentions are... Oh, well, are... Open power! No! No, no, please! No! No! Get out! Get away from me! Get away! Get away! I haven't slept at all. I was I was swimming for most of the night. I thought I was gonna drown. Put that down! Who is this boy? This is Tom. He is your son. My son. I, I was pregnant when you went away. How long have I been away? They said your ship was lost. I thought you were dead. How long have I been gone? Nearly nine years. What's this terrible army going to burst out of his stomach then? Be quiet, son. What do you know about military strategy, you country oafs? We never see food like that. What about the rationing? You tell him to eat seaweed soup. One more word, I'll have you flung. Forgive his impertinence, sir, please. Greetings, brother. I fear the worst. The Big Enders must have sent him as the beginning of an invasion force. Oh, stay proper now. We found him. He's salvaged. You're under arrest for treason. Take him away and the other one. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. Not to us. You can't. I'll summon the entire fleet into the bay. We must notify the Emperor at once. I was so hungry, but it took hours and hours to eat anything at all. I had to swallow about a dozen loaves just to get one mouthful. I eat cows and pigs and chickens completely whole. Bones and all. I had to drain at least 11 barrels of wine before my thirst was satisfied. I don't understand. Why was the food so tiny? Because the Lilliputians. Yes, that's right. There were hundreds of them. They were everywhere. They're... They were dragging tiny timbers and tree trunks towards me. They must have cleared a whole forest. And then I heard this banging and sawing, and I realized they were building this, this massive wooden frame. Then horses arrived, teams of horses, 10, 20, 30. They must have been 100 before they finished. They were using them to, to drag me away from the cliff. Lemuel, you're not making any sense. Well, maybe it was the wine, but suddenly, suddenly I start to feel very strange, and they're pulling me. 
They're pulling me along. What? Go and find Joshua. Anybody, quickly. Take him into the cell no, no, no. quickly. Why are you tying me up? Nobody's tying you up, Lemuel. Mind his head. Where did you find him? He slept in the stable all night. Tom found him. Over there, quickly now. Right. The procession halted outside the Emperor's palace. Why are we stopping? Delight and terror of the universe, whose dominions extend five thousand mustrats, whose feet press down to the center, and whose head strikes against the sun, the most mighty emperor of Delisha! Well, you weren't exaggerating. He's a whopper. He's under constant guard, Father. He's dead if he makes a move. Does he talk? He has a limited vocabulary, Father. How does one address him? <coughs> uh, man Mountain is the usual term, Your Majesty. Shut up. Good evening, Man Mountain. Good evening, Your Excellency. Splendid! Who are these two? Caught trying to steal the giant from the state. That's a lie. We found him. He belongs to us. No, no, no. <laughs> you see, we don't want him. We, we are going to donate him to the war effort. Traitors, are they? Mm. Let's feed them to the giant. <laughs> An excellent test of his ferocity. Don't eat me, and I'll be your friend for life. Uh, I see you're all right. Partners, you and me, what'd you say, hey? <sighs> no! <coughs> my son! My son! Shown mercy. How marvelous. We, however, will not have them both disemboweled at dawn. Well, I don't think that's wise, Your Majesty. can't have slept for days. Certainly his mind is extremely disturbed. It's so wonderful. I, I'd given up all hope. Had you? But I didn't mean... Uh... No, of course not. It's a miracle that he has returned to us. Now we must let him rest. Yesterday, we gave him enough to feed a regiment for a week. Now he complains he's hungry again. I have here a projection from my treasury based on the multiplication of his body weight. 
he's going to consume the rations of exactly 1,728 of your subjects every day. Every day? We can't have that. Let's kill him and be done with it. No, no, no. The decomposing corpse. It could cause a serious plague. Well, if we continue feeding him, there'll be famine to deal with. What's the difference? Is he secure? Absolutely, Majesty. Army matter. Until he decides to escape. Your Majesty. Mad Mountain! Where do I go this wife? I want her to see him. Uh, she's a little nervous of meeting our new arrival, Majesty. Sweet meat! Please come out and have a look. How are you today, my chick? Pale, my husband. Pale and fearful. <gasps> How brutish she looks! Ask him to descend. Down here. Gently now. To me. Whoa! He's staring at me. He has a horrible leering expression. Oh, really? He's in chains. He can't do anything. He might bite. On the contrary, Empress. I should like to kiss your beautiful hand. How charming. No! Yes! <laughs> Bring tails in a bucket. <laughs> I think his lips were a bit wet. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. Not at all. <laughs> Where does he sleep? Well, nowhere, Your Majesty. Not yet. We're uh, organizing a bed. 600 beds, to be precise. I have the figures here. 144 blankets, 322 sheets. Thank you, Your Majesty. Majesty? What Majesty? Oh, with your voice. If you speak loudly, they'll be frightened. Get up, man. Get up off the floor, for pity's sake. I asked them to release me. Asked who? The Emperor. Dr. Gulliver, I must insist. He had a great desire for me to see the magnificence of his palace in the center of the city of Mildendo. The people had been warned of my approach, but I trod very carefully for fear of harming any stragglers. I wore only my waistcoat, so I did no damage to the roofs of the eaves with the skirts of my coat. The palace was a most magnificent construction, standing 60 feet high to the Lilliputians. When I climbed into the courtyard, I was able to observe the splendor of the royal household. The Empress herself was in attendance and pleased to smile graciously upon me. Go away! Get away from me, you horrible monster! Shoo! Shoo! Well, he lives in a big crater on the moon, eating mostly fruit and cheese. He's a fascinating chap, with many wondrous stories to tell. I'm the only one he'll confide in, of course. You will not believe this. I have got my own bedroom with pillows. <laughs> have you got pillows in your bedroom? And a bell to ring. Should I want anything in the night? No. Cost the trouble is, are you? I can't sleep in the bed. Cost my feet are too dirty. Allow 
call me your majesty. Wonderful room. What is this place? This is the great chamber of war, from which the Emperor directs his noble campaign against the evil empire that confronts us. At first we thought you were a weapon of the Big Enders, our sworn enemy. Forgive my ignorance, Excellency, but who are Big Enders? And why are they your sworn enemy? Well, because... Uh... Boys, explain! Uh, yes, of course. Um, it's very simple. We are little enders and the enemy are big enders. <laughs> but what, what does big enders or little enders mean? There's a subversive tone to his questioning that I don't care for. I agree. Are you an agitator? Certainly not. Easy to say. The Lilliputians competed for public office in a most strange manner. Promotion was not given for bravery or service to the state, but for skill at the noble art of creeping and leaping. What are you looking at? The Emperor is demanding my presence. This most unusual ceremony was presided over by the Emperor in his throne. The candidates, at considerable risk to themselves, undertake a trial of dexterity such as I have not seen in any other country of the old or new world. The Emperor holds a stick in his hands, both ends parallel to the horizon, while the candidates, advancing one by one, sometimes leap over the stick and sometimes creep under as the stick is raised or lowered. Whoever performs his part with the most agility and shows the greatest skill at leaping and creeping is rewarded with the highest office. Oh, my Who? Oh. The old Lord Chancellor. Most people were. I found you some clothes. Who is that man? What is he doing in our house? It isn't our house. Not anymore. Dr. Bates has been most kind. He's paid for much of Tom's upkeep. But now he owns the house. He runs your old practice in the village and I am his housekeeper. Mary? Excuse me. Come along, I want you downstairs for your supper. Don't be frightened of me. I don't want to seem indelicate, but where's he going to stay? Well, I thought he'd stay here. For a while, of course, but what's he going to do? I'm the doctor now, there's no work for him, and he seems... Forgive me to be suffering from some form of mania. He's exhausted and, and clearly troubled. I, I accept his behavior is strange. Mary, it is a joyous thing that he has returned and we must give thanks for it.
Where are you going? I, I cannot sleep here. Let me, I, I understand. We're like strangers meeting again for the first time. No, 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 no. Don't touch me. I can't bear for you to come too near me. Please, you're weak, Tom. You don't understand. You cannot understand where I've been. Tell me what's wrong. Help me to understand. Please. You're frightening me. I will sleep in Tom's room if that's what you wish. I'm used to it. Mary, please believe me. I want to come home, but I cannot. I cannot. I cannot! persuaded the Emperor to mount the most impressive military parade ever seen. With all the Imperial troops passing between my legs, sightseers came from every corner of Lilliput. Women and children, farmers and teachers, lawyers and midwives, all lining the street to gape and stare. There had been other military parades before, of course, but none with, well, with me. Money is rolling in, Your Highness. We can approve unprecedented military expansion. What if he slips and falls on us? Darling, no harm can befall you. Nothing can go wrong, Your Highness. I've organized every last detail. I understand his trousers are somewhat ragged uh, on account of the shipwreck. And I really must warn Your Ladyship that under no circumstances should you look upward as we drive underneath it. Here we go, everybody. Blimey! Unbelievable! Ah! Colossus! I want you to stop this now. Stop what? All this, all these stories. Just be normal again. I'm simply telling them what happened. Well, I don't want you to. Is it your wish for me to lose my position and my home, is it? But that's what will happen if you persist in this nonsense. This is intolerable. How can I concentrate on my work while he's charging about the house like an idiot? Get rid of that monster! very ill, Mary. Perhaps it is not my place, but I have to say that I'm worried for the child. The ideas that he's putting into his head are not proper or Christian. We cannot allow this to continue. But what can we do? Sometimes I visit a hospital where they help people who are sick like this. I think it might be best if we took him there, just so the doctors can examine him. He'll never agree. Leave that to me. has just arrived, Admiral. Yeah, news? The worst. The Big Enders have built a new war fleet. I knew it. We must move our troops. Father, I urge you give nothing away. Big Enders spies are everywhere. Surely not in my own campaign room. Especially here. The walls have ears. of bloody menace. Well, how substantial is that attacking fleet? Warships with 500 cannons. 500? But our biggest ships have only 50. And naval warriors so fearsome they'd rather die than surrender. Oh, this is awful. Our troops will always surrender rather than die. What shall we do? Take every second farmer off the land and have him build warships. Increase the army by 600,000 men and employ them immediately to construct a 40-foot wall around Lilliput. Boys, boys, we did both those last month. 
There's nothing for it. We have held back our greatest weapon for long enough. I was summoned to the Emperor and told in no uncertain terms the very future of Lilliput itself depended upon my courage and ingenuity. A massive invasion fleet stood poised, ready to attack, and I was the only thing standing in its way. I scoured the whole of the land for the thickest ropes and cables I could find and bent a number of iron bars into hooks like this. Bravo! <laughs> well, that night... That night, I waded across the channel separating the two empires and in the last yard, took a great breath and dived underwater. <laughs> I made it. The sailors screamed in terror when they saw me. Most of them abandoned ship and jumped overboard. Lemuel, judge! Nothing could stop me now. I started off to little push, dragging the entire fleet behind me. Put the child to bed. What's wrong? Do as you're told now. But I, I, I think trust I should... my judgment in this. Do as I request. Give me your hand, Doctor. My glorious victory was the cause of much rejoicing throughout the land. Thousands rushed to the gates to meet me, and there was the greatest cheer of relief and celebration that you ever heard. Marvelous! Marvelous! The end of the war! Peace and prosperity! <laughs> For doing what our greatest generals and admirals could not, you are awarded our greatest honor. Page boy! What is our greatest honor? The Order of Nardak, Majesty. The, the Nardak? But, but, Father, General Limtok and I are only clumglums. I mean, how would it look to our men if he has a higher honor? Yeah, the job is worse than half done. I agree. I mean, it's one thing to bring home the ships of the enemy, but quite another to bring home the enemy themselves. The monster must prove his loyalty by killing all beginners. Must be. Every last man, woman and child. Mm. I think you should return and destroy what remains of the enemy. Oh, I don't think there's any need to crush them completely, Your Majesty. They can do us no harm and I'm sure they'll make a dignified surrender. My husband gave you an order. Mm. With all due respect, we've won the war. There's no more threat. We've won. We need to talk. Mm. confess I got very drunk. I had been told that I emptied the royal cellars of everything save 12 barrels of sweet cider. I don't know. I'm working harder now than I ever did. Let me fill your glass. Thank you, it's full. The thing was, they've been fighting this ridiculous war for generations and generations. And none of them had the slightest clue what they were fighting about. I know. 
They've been killing each other for years and years, and there wasn't a single Lilliputian who knew why. No, no, I mean, I know. I know how the war started. You know. Well, I know what my grandmother told me. When the Emperor's great-great-grandfather were a little boy, he was eating an egg for his breakfast one day, when, breaking it off, at the larger end, he happened to cut one of his fingers. Now, his father, the emperor, that's the 23rd emperor, that is, he published a law commanding everybody on pain of beheading to break their eggs off at the smaller end. <laughs> now, little pushers, they don't like being told what to do, see? And some of them said, we are going to break our eggs at the big end and just you try to stop us, which is exactly what the emperor did. <laughs> Eventually, the rebels fled across the water to Blafuska. And thus began the great and terrible war. We have had, all in all, 11,000 people suffer death rather than submit to breaking their eggs at the smaller end. You smell burning. A firework had set light to the palace, and Her Imperial Majesty's apartments were ablaze. The Lilliputians had already applied their tiny ladders to the walls of the building, and were well provided with buckets. But the water was at some distance, and in any event, the ladders were not tall enough, so the case seemed wholly desperate, and this magnificent palace would most certainly have been burned to the ground and the Empress with it, if, by a presence of mind unusual to me, I had not suddenly had an idea. I was still full from my drinking session, and looking down on the royal bedchamber, only one course of action seemed open to me. Thank you! Thank you! You have saved my life! <clears throat> It's an outrage. He made water in the royal grounds. It's a treasonable offence. But he saved the Empress's life. At what cost? Our stepmother will never be able to show her face in public again, convinced that she's the laughing stock of Lilliput. But she's not there. Is she? <clears throat> and earlier, he openly defied your command to attack the Big Enders. He humiliated you. You're right. You're right. We must execute him. Execute him? You can't do that. Well, I mean, we must consider all the options. Are you with us, Lord Chancellor, or with the monster? We'll spread poison on his shirt which will make him tear his own flesh apart in torture. Then I'll get a thousand men with poisoned arrows, and as he staggers back, we'll fire them in his face. Good plans, boys, but I don't think we should actually murder him. You were so keen to kill Mother last year, and now I miss her dreadfully. You're both too impulsive. But I agree something must be done. Something merciful. We'll dig out both his eyes. Oh, I don't know. Just the eyes. Doesn't seem very much to me. When he's blinded, he'll be much more obedient and even more courageous because he won't see any danger. Couldn't we shatter his kneecaps with cannonballs as well? That way. Are we all here? Where's the new Chancellor gone? Wake up! Wake up! The General 
Bigfoot's a plotting to kill you. No, you got to no. try and escape. I'm a war hero. I just saved the Empress's life. Now, don't go to sleep. I can't stay here. They'll kill me too if they find out. I had escaped, but to where? Where could I go? Would I just swim out to sea until I drowned? Clostral's help, I hid from the Emperor's soldiers who were searching everywhere for me. That night I pulled up hundreds of trees and tied them together to make a small raft, while Drunlo organized a collection of every single bedsheet for miles around, and I began to sew them together to make a sail. Thank you for saving my life. I'm sorry if... Don't you talk to me. All in the palm of my hand. Wealth, power, respect. Look at me now, eh? Back to seaweed soup. I'd like to leave you a gift. My ring. Oh, marvellous. Well, what do I want your ring for, eh? I can't wear it, can I? This... This... It's gold. treated me good. You was always my friend. I'm rich! Dad, I'm rich! Never mind that, son. Never mind that. I think I found the other boot. Th this isn't right. It's done now. I, I feel as if I've betrayed him. You know it's the right thing to do. The doctors at the hospital are very caring people. Right. Seven days and nights I sailed without sighting land.
My supplies had run desperately low and I was losing all hope. I was gradually forced to eat my carefully gathered supplies until only one sheep remained. Land. Land! No matter if it was more tiny people, at least it was land. Well, don't worry. I'm taking you somewhere you'll be safe. Your signature here, Dr. Bates. I think we can leave the rest of the formalities till tomorrow. Giants! Behavior absolutely necessary. Mother Earth, it's an omen. It's an omen. Have you, uh, have you found something, Colter? Nothing. Back to work. Perhaps he's a hobgoblin. He's nothing of the kind. He's a good-look sign from Mother Earth to show we're going to have a fine harvest. I'm going to give him some meat. Giants. And so ugly. Their skin was so crinkled and pocked and boil-infested, it made me wonder what I looked like to the Lilliputians. Perhaps I was just as... <coughs> Coward! Down! Let me out of here! There's been some terrible mistake! Oi! You in there! Keep quiet! Come stand by me. This is my daughter, Glumdoklich. He's lovely. Who's going to take care of him, I wonder? Oh, can I? Can I have him to keep? He's a grand little fellow, isn't he? He can do tricks as well, I expect. Do us a dance. <laughs> we could make a lot of money with this little fella. What is this place? A hospital. Since when do hospitals have bolted doors? It's a hospital for people with sick minds. Well, I can assure you there's nothing wrong with me. It is for us to ascertain. I don't like this box. Where are you taking me? What box? 
What are you talking about? Come and see the wee wonder, the spirit of the cornfield. <laughs> come and see now, wee wonder, spirit of the cornfield. Come on, everybody. Rob Ding Nag? Yes. And what part of the world is this Rob Ding Nag in? I don't know. I was completely lost. I had no compass. A and you say this little girl was carrying you? In the traveling box, yes, that they made me. Look, to understand my predicament, you have to imagine yourself as only as tall as my hand. That is to say, if you were to lie down on the floor, please, I'm not trying to make a fool of you. See how different the world looks? Well, imagine, imagine everything you know is now huge, monstrous. If we make too much noise, the sprite may not come out. He's a timid little fella. Mind that none of you look him direct into the eye. He might curse you. Who summons the spirit of the cornfield? Oh, uh, I do. Uh, I need your wisdom, O oh spirit. Show me gold and thou shalt be told. It's, it's my radishes, O oh spirit of the cornfield. <coughs> oh spirit. We humbly beseech you to rid these rotten vegetables of their cursed affliction. Then I pretend to go into this, this fit, like this, you see. Let it get glad to bring it falling down, falling down, falling down, among the bridges, falling down, my fair lady. <laughs> the spirit has spoken. Your radishes will be the plumpest and the firmest in the entire country. Next. And you really believed you were possessed by this spirit of the cornfield, did no, you? No, of course not. You were just doing it to make money. I had sick cows brought before me. I was blessing chickens. I was exhausted. If this life was so terrible, why did you try to escape? I was helpless. Can you understand? My destiny was out of my hands. That's all for the night. He'll perform again at daybreak. I am one of the Queen's ladies in waiting. I don't care if you're the Queen herself. I am off sleep. I was wondering if the little gentleman might be for sale. My little fella? My little magician? No, oh no. I'm authorized to offer you a considerable sum. Uh, no disrespect, my lady, but no amount of money is going to part the two of us. I have here 500 pieces of gold. Do you want to take him tonight? I begged the farmer not to part me from Glumboclitch, the only person who really cared for me. Of course, he quickly agreed, only too happy to see his daughter brought up in the royal household. We traveled with the lady for several hours through rich fields and vast farmlands until we reached the palace. In a lifetime, a man will appear, smaller than all others. And he will be a lucky charm, a talisman for crops, bringing strong sunshine and sweet rain for the harvest. Such a man is me. Am I, or am I not, the smallest person in the kingdom? Can any man look up to me? I'm a shrimp. A worm, an ant, a tadpole, a grub. Am I short? I'm minuscule. I'm dinky, dainty, diminutive. I'm titchy, tiny. I'm so small. Your Majesty.
last. No more riding around on the back of a donkey cart. Here was the queen, and I was taking no chances. I threw myself at her feet, the only part where I could reach anyway, and I kissed her toe a number of times and addressed her in the normal manner. Most glorious empress, oh adornment of nature, the darling of the world, delight of all your subjects, the phoenix of creation. And this queen, she was also a giant, was she? How many times do I have to tell you they were all giants? Even the dwarf was a giant. Well, Quildrick, it seems you are no longer the smallest man in the kingdom. Look, your majesty! Yes, yes, later, Quildrick. We have a new jester. <laughs> Her majesty and I chatted for a while, and I could tell that she was plainly impressed with such wit and good sense and so diminutive a person. For the first time since arriving in this awful place, I felt amongst equals and knew that from now on I would be treated with respect. He's a monstrosity. I disagree. He's a midget, albeit a uniquely small one. You're both wrong. He's a clockwork toy. And I've no doubt we can find the hole in his back if we look carefully enough. Take your hands off me! Please, there's been some terrible mistake. I'm a doctor myself. There's nothing wrong with me. Now, let me leave, please. Note that his eyes are constantly moving and he sweats extremely. Why don't you like being touched? I just don't. I don't have to give a reason, do I? He's very restless. His mood changes all the time and his speech is eccentric, full of fantasy. From the teeth I see, he's a carnivore. Even tiny animals like field mice could overpower him. He likes the claws for, for climbing trees and digging in the earth. Perhaps we should try mating him with an animal of his own size. Perhaps we should not. This is outrageous. Gentlemen, please listen to me. I come from a civilized country which abounds with several million people of both sexes of my own stature, where the houses and the trees and the animals are all in proportion. And I have no trouble feeding myself or protecting myself or anything else for that matter. I am a man just like you. <laughs> that farmer was cunning to have taught him to say all this. <laughs> you can't keep me here against my will. Where's my wife and son? You may shout as much as you wish in here. It's something we expect. You weren't punished for such behavior. But that, I'm afraid, is where your rights end. Put her to bed for a day or two if the symptoms persist. Rest and warmth are all she needs. I have no more patients today, Mary. We can leave if you're ready. I won't be gone long. Why can't I come? You can come next time. I expect all this to be cleared away before I get home. I wish I could dissuade you from visiting him yet. Please don't expect any dramatic improvements so quickly. And 
our country, we also have very high taxes, Your Majesty. Keeps people in their place. We have no taxes. But everyone's bringing you the fruits of their labor. So that they can be divided up between the whole kingdom fairly. Amongst the higher classes, you mean? <laughs> no, we have enough food to feed everybody. A farmer brings in his crop and takes home some of his neighbors. Look, each takes his share and no one goes hungry. But unless some people are starving, how can there be structure to society? What do your ministers say about this? Ministers? Each village sends its oldest farmer to meet with me twice a year and we decide what's best for the common good. The common good? Yes, for instance, Grildrick's new job is to feed the rotten produce to the pigs. Oh, dear. I hope he doesn't bear me any malice. Grildrick! You're not jealous of our new jester, are you? Oh, my lady, nothing could be further from the truth. Like yourself, I've taken a special shine to the little chap. <laughs> I want to see whoever's in charge now. I demand to be let out. Enter. I've got a surprise for you. Shall I open it? Thank you. Yes. Dear little Glumdeklitch, she clearly adored me. She so enjoyed dressing me and undressing me like a doll, even though I could, of course, manage for myself. Oh, Glum, it's beautiful. Does this feel like your home now? Not really. My house isn't quite as big as this. Will you take me there one day? So I can meet your queen and see her great city? Yes, I will. We'll go to the theater. And what'll we do before we go? Tell me everything we'll do. Well, first, we'll walk through the park and bow to all the ladies and gentlemen. Dressed in our finest clothes, of course. The very finest. And then we will sit and we'll take tea. Chocolate. Can I have chocolate? Ah, chocolate, certainly. Very fashionable choice, my lady. And I will buy you presents. Lots of presents. A doll's house. Even bigger than this one. The children will love it. If we're married, we'll have children, won't we? Glum, how old are you? Eleven. But I'm growing very fast. I already have a wife, Glum. Oh. In? In England. You said it was a hospital. This is more like a prison. I don't like it any more than you do, Mary. Some of the patients become disturbed. And it's necessary to keep them securely. Mary, thank God you're here. I've got to get out of this place. You have come to take me home. Well, we, we thought it best you had a chance to recover first. Have the doctors seen you yet? Yes, but they don't understand. The, the trouble is they know nothing about England, so they have no idea how intelligent I am. They don't know about England. Well, why should they? They've never been there. 
course, of course, that's what I have to do. Bates, call the doctors right now. I have to tell them everything. That way they'll stop treating me like a child. Call them back. Call them back. I began a massive lecture to explain the difference between their simple farming life and our complex, sophisticated society. I extol the virtues of our great government education and arts, our, our courts and their great wisdom. I mentioned the prudent management of our treasury, the valor of our army and navy, and our great colonies and conquests. My remarkable lecture lasted five audiences with the queen, each one lasting several hours. She was most attentive, frequently making notes, and when I'd finished, she requested a sixth audience, no doubt to praise my eloquence and to beg my forgiveness. I have some questions. Questions? Your Majesty. Questions. These ministers who run your country, how do they get to be ministers? Well, usually it's a uh, sum of money that decides the issue. So how do they gain the knowledge about the people they're supposed to serve? They don't need much knowledge because they spend, well, most of their time drinking and gambling. Yes, you've mentioned gambling before. At what age is this entertainment taken up? 16 or 17. And at what age is it put down? 60 or, or 70. In your courts, how much time is spent in determining between right and wrong? Oh, trials last weeks or months at great cost to those involved. Doesn't that mean the poor have no recourse to the law? Well, the poor are too busy working to need justice. Do your lawyers ever plead cases which manifestly they know to be wrong? Of course. That's their job. And this amuses you, does it? To mock our institutions. No, no, I was trying to defend them. That was the whole point. You said your taxes raise more than five or six million, and yet the state spends more than double that amount. How can a kingdom spend more than it receives in taxes? Well, that's... that's simple. We just borrow more from ourselves. I have to say that you're doing yourself no good by trying to make fools of us. But it's the truth. And your wars. Our wars. Why are you always attacking people? What business have you to leave your shores unless to trade? Well, often we have to defend ourselves by attacking before we've been attacked, thus gaining the element of surprise. <clears throat> and this standing army of yours, why is it standing? In the midst of peace amongst a free people, why do you need such a massive force of weapons and men? I, 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 I don't, I began to crumble, to, to lose my way. I stuttered, hesitated. Really, I've heard enough. We have other patients to see. But I haven't finished yet. The, the whole purpose of- I said I've heard enough. The history of your country seems to consist of nothing more than a squalid string of conspiracies, rebellions, revolutions, murders, and massacres. Every judgment seems to be motivated by greed, by malice, hypocrisy, hatred, envy, lust, and madness. Perhaps I explain badly. We shall examine you again at the beginning of next month. In the meantime... Next month? What in God's name are you talking about? Haven't you heard a word I said? You have proved that ignorance, idleness, and vice are the only qualifications for public office and that your laws are made by those whose only interest is in perverting them. I can only conclude that your people are the most pernicious race of odious little vermin that ever nature suffered to crawl upon the face of the earth. Your Majesty. Stay with him, Mary. Let me talk to the doctors and plead for his release. Don't despair, Lemuel. A month. Don't lose hope. Let me talk to you. I don't belong here. I'm just a joke. I'm the laughing stock of the entire country. I think you're very clever. We could think of something that would impress the Queen. Oh, yes, yes. Perhaps if I learned how to juggle bananas with my feet, perhaps I would raise my social standing in the court. You must know something they don't. You're so clever. I know hundreds of things they don't. They know nothing of music, of 
politics of culture or... Gunpowder. What is gunpowder? Never mind that. Take this list of ingredients. Now, mix them in the quantities that I've described there. The Harvest Day Festival was only three days away. It was the perfect chance for me to make a good impression. People from all over the kingdom would be, would be coming to the court. Now, now, a normal explosion would hardly be noticed by these, these, these giants, and the last thing I wanted was another public humiliation, so I, so I multiplied the quantities of gunpowder tenfold. If you want to make this amount of doubt, you should even see this gunpowder experiment. I think we should increase these figures fivefold, tenfold at least. Mm. Then perhaps we'll have a proper demonstration. Mm. and everyone else was tired. <laughs> and you just found him wandering about the street? The uh, lady found him, yes. She brought him to my surgery. What name should the patient be admitted under? The desperate patient of Dr. Bates. Are you sure you don't want to come out and see the harvest parade? Quite sure, thank you. The noise will give me a headache. Pour for me, will you? I wish you wouldn't drink so much. Thank you for your concern. And I wish I didn't have to live in this monstrous place. Are you nervous about the bun powder demonstration? Gunpowder, not bun powder. No, I'm not nervous. I'm fine. Please, Glum, leave me alone. Why was I so horrible to her? The dear girl had shown me nothing but kindness and love. I was just angry that no one would take me seriously. Still, things would be very different after the demonstration. Try this. Hello, shorty. Girl trick! And with all the noise outside, no one could hear me shout. I ran to the center of the table and hid as best I could. That won't do you any good. I've been waiting a long time for this. As I lay there bruised, I heard this the sound and I I looked up and I saw Grilder graze this your head look like when a wasp stings you. It'll swell up, bloated with pus, until it's so big, it'll just cough. Happy Harvest Day, Squirt. They were all around me. 
One over there. Two hovering around the food at the other end of the table. Lanyol, there's nothing in here. how I felt. I was exhausted, but... He's having a fit. Please don't let them hurt him. Why, why won't anyone believe me? Look! Wait, wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! I can prove that I'm not making any of these stories up. Go back to the house right now. Find my medical bag. He doesn't me... know what he's saying. Bring me the bag! I can prove that everything has happened to me! Mary, you've got to believe me! It's the truth! I'm afraid it's much worse than we thought. I know this is hard, but I think that your very presence is making his condition worse. But I have to see him. He's my husband. I, I can't have got him back only to lose him again. Please, it's the best thing to do. No, stop it! You can't keep me here! I'm not mad! I can, I can prove I'm not mad! Are you sure you're all right? Yes, of course. Fine. Proceed with the demonstration. Now witness the exciting power of this substance created, I might add, by my odious race and seemingly unknown to even your greatest minds. No need to cover your ears. Just a small flash of light and an explosion the size of a log cracking on the fire. thinking. Look in the cage. Hurry up, please. Come on. What are you doing in here? Nothing. You know you're not allowed in here. What did I tell you? It's all right, Mary. Let me talk to him. You're upset. What are you doing in my study? I wasn't doing anything. I have never taken my strap to you, but please don't lie to me or I will. You're not my father. You can't beat me. Thomas, I don't want to beat you. I know how glad you were to see your father again. But he's a sick man. 
a violent and disturbed man. Do you know how you can help him most? No. By forgetting everything he has told you. All those silly stories. All this nonsense. He came back for a day and now he's gone away again. We've got to know each other very well over the last two years. And we've got to like each other, haven't we? Yes, we have. And soon I will be your father. Your proper father. And unlike Lemuel, I will care for you properly. My father cares for me. Oh, Thomas, if he cared so much for you, why didn't he come home all this time? Why did he leave your mother and you alone in poverty? More and more, I asked Glumberclitch to take me to the seaside, where I would stare at the ocean for hours and think of my home and everything I had lost. I prayed for help, but no boat ever came past. Never won. You wouldn't leave without saying goodbye to me, would you? How can I leave? What will I do? Flap my arms and fly away? I know you're very homesick. Oh, Glum. Someday you'll meet someone your own size and you'll forget all about me. I won't. I'll never forget you. Don't cry. I'm not. Very angry. What were you doing in Dr. Bates' surgery? Oh, I found the sheep. What are you talking about? The little sheep from Lilliput. Just there are some it. tiny things or giant things. They're just stories. But I saw it. It's just stories. Now go upstairs to your roof. I'm, I'm cold. Put me back in my box, please. Till I tell you to come down. I lost all sense of time as the bird flew on and on. In my last moments, I thought of my dear Glumbleclitch, who would certainly be blamed for my disappearance and would lose her place at court and falling. I felt myself falling with such incredible swiftness that I almost lost my breath. Did you look in his medical bag like he said? Completely empty. I don't know what to do. Leave everything to me, Mary. I'll take care of it all. So this was it, then? My end, finally. I tried to keep my spirits high, but I realized I would surely die here. I had no food or water. My box was sinking. No boats would pass. I resigned myself to my...
Thank you. I can't tell you what a relief it is to see you the same size as I am. I'm glad it gives you so much pleasure, sir. Forgive my ignorance. But where are we? We are on the flying island of Laputa. I was flying, traveling through the air several hundred feet above the ground. <laughs> and how big was this flying island? It was huge, at least a half a mile across, but floating gently through the air so it were no heavier than a cloud. And people lived on it. Several hundred of the greatest minds in the universe. Living conditions were quite cramped. It was like a warship. Everyone lived in tiny cabins and only came out from time to time to the observation decks. Excuse me. <clears throat> Noble sirs. These masters are engaged in contemplation of the universe. Do you wish to enter into discourse with them? Well, yes. If you'd permit me, sir. What is your opinion on the sun's health? Well, it, it seemed all right last time I looked. What about the spots? Spots? New volcanoes on the surface are sending out enormous clouds of smoke. As the volcanoes become more violent, so the spots decay and... Yes, yes. Forgive my ignorance, but where exactly are we? See, if we're flying towards the sun, then we must be traveling west at the moment. You think so? <gasps> What a fascinating theory. So I, I, I was... I'm interested. You have obviously that. given them a lot to think about, mm. sir. May I show you your cabin so that you can take rest before the end of the world ball tonight? Yes, perhaps I am. End of the world? Did you say end of the world ball? to leave the table until you've eaten something. Do you see the harm he's done? Tom? Tom! I'll see to him. I will not accept this behavior towards Dr. Bates and I will not have you being disobedient. Please come out right now and eat your breakfast. I won't tell you again. Look, and I know why you're doing this, and it's not going to achieve anything. None of the things your father told you are true. He just made them up to entertain you. He's very ill. That's why he can't come home. I can't change that as much as I want to. Your silence will not help him. What did they eat? Perhaps they grew mushrooms. In the clouds! <laughs> <laughs> Don't revel in your ignorance, please. The intellectuals of Laputa were far too busy having great thoughts to be burdened with the chores of farming. They would travel the lands, collecting brain taxes from their subjects below. The island would descend <laughs> over a village or a state, and buckets would be lowered to be filled with food and drink and whatever else they wanted. This is where you will sleep, sir. But there appears to be no bed or table or anything that... Now, we must have you majored for your costumes. Costume? For the ball.
brilliant intellectuals employed techniques unknown to our tailors in the old world. Painstakingly, they measured the circumference of my ears, the distance between my toes, the length of my eyelashes, and even my shadow. Hard to understand, then, the result. Hello. I hope you're settling in all right. I saw you in the ocean and ordered you winched up. Oh, thank you. I'm Prince Minodi. Forgive me, Your Highness. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't bother with all that. Nobody else does. Everyone knows I'm the most stupid and ignorant person in Laputa. Oh, I'm sure that can't be true. I'm sure it can. The only reason I'm tolerated is that I'm the Raja's son. I don't suppose it'd be possible to have an audience with your father. You see, I'm trying to find out how to get home. Well, he's deep in thought, up in the observatory at the moment. But I'm sure he'll see you in the afternoon. I'm performing tonight, so I must dash. You wouldn't want to see him in this condition. But if you try to visit him again, I know it will just agitate him further. You say the same thing each day. Because he gets worse each day. More disturbed and violent. I know what you're thinking. You believe that I'm deliberately trying to keep you away from him. I, I yes, you do, Mary. I only did what I thought was best for Lemuel. And yet, as soon as I had taken him away, I suddenly felt guilty had I acted in haste, for selfish reasons. Perhaps I'm a coward. Perhaps I should have sailed the world, and then you would have chosen me. But when I see him now, how broken he is, I wonder perhaps if I am not the wiser man for all my cowardice. If I cannot see him, I will write to him. Will you take him my letters? Of course, Mary, of course. Answer me one thing. Do you really believe that he'll recover? Yes. Yes, of course. Don't you? I only wish I could say yes. The Raja will see you now. Well, why? Oh, thank you. I can manage on my own. Thank you, that will not be necessary. Majesty, I, I am a traveler from... Excuse me, Majesty. <coughs> I'm trying to get back to England, Majesty. England? You know of it. You like it? England, Majesty, it's my home. No, the music. The music of the spheres. I confess I strain to hear anything. Ah, then we must adapt your ears so that they can hear more clearly. I'm undeserving of such honor. <laughs> yes, I suspect you are. Please forgive yet another interruption, Majesty, but I really am desperate to get home. I was wondering, perhaps someone else might know how to get to England. It is a small island, but of unrivaled world importance. You could try the academy. They know everything. Everything that's worth knowing. And much more besides. And how will I find this academy? You will find it smashed into smithereens. You will find it in a hundred thousand pieces. For I have compared the figures of the moon and the zodiac, enabling me to announce with complete confidence that a blazing comet will collide with the sun at three minutes past three in the morning. Good heavens. That phenomenon coincides exactly with your arrival. What is your name? Gulliver, Majesty. Mm. We shall name this unspeakable catastrophe Gulliver's Orb. Too kind. I know I have failed you. I should never have agreed to send you away. But please believe how hard it was for me. I only want you to be well again. My deepest wish is that you will soon come back and live with us. To have you and then lose you again is almost unbearable. If you refuse to see me, then at least write just a few words. I will always love you. How does one prepare for the end of the world? The Raja had commissioned a special symphony to celebrate him. 
Though I must confess, I found the music a little too intellectual for my taste. I thought you were playing in the concert. I was asked to leave. My instrument kept playing in tune. Intellect is in everything, surely, Your Majesty. It is here. Well, at least the world is ending tomorrow. The world about to end. That night I couldn't sleep. I lay tossing and turning, waiting for oblivion, trying to make my peace. Finally, I, I fell asleep. I woke the next morning. I jumped up and rushed to my cabin window. Clouds still scudded, sun still shone, birds still flapped. The world had not ended. I wish I could share your excitement. I rather hoped it would. The island was controlled by a giant magnet. By ingenious movements, it could be made to rise or fall. The only disadvantage to this, as far as I could see, was that whenever the lodestone was moved, all the compasses on the island moved as well. So the Laputans had absolutely no idea where they were going. Where are we flying to now? Well, the next collecting point is Empress Minodi's, my mother's estate. But when we get there, it's quite another matter. Look apprehensive, Your Highness. I just know there'll be trouble. Mother and father disagree about everything. She's a very down-to-earth woman. Father's always had his head in the cloud, so to speak. They've lived apart for quite a while. I had a very unhappy childhood. Of this, my mother's refusing to set up any brain taxes. Come on, Father. If it's war she wants, it's war she'll get. I am applying my massive intellect to the matter. I don't think Mother wants war. She simply doesn't think it's right we should take all her food. Not, not that I, I know anything. We shall position ourselves over her land and deprive them of rain until the crops wither and die. <laughs> I am a genius. Isn't there a river running through the royal estate, Father? I knew that. The Raja and his intellectuals debated the right course of action, while the island bore down on the Minodi estate. I wonder what my idiot husband will do now. I have it! We must bomb them! Bomb, mother? Bomb your wife? Bombs away! Bombs. Very well. Two can play at that game. She had ordered the construction of a massive magnet, tall as a house and mounted on a wooden truck, drawn by 12 cart horses. This was cranked upwards until it was aimed directly at the island. Then the horses started to drag the magnet away until... Oh, Father! Oh, we're descending much too quickly and at a very strange angle. Not that I know anything. Do you want to wear the dunce's cap again? Shouldn't we just leave before there's any more trouble? Right. Go to your cabin and read your navigation books. 
I think we should have lunch. Lunch? Oh. Or perhaps a plate of something to nibble? <coughs> Your Majesty, the whole island is falling apart. You have to do something! I see no reason to rush into action. Your Highness, what should we do? I'm the last prisoners of a crisis. No, you're not. Now, what should we do? But if I wasn't so oh. stupid, I'd suggest reversing the load step. Brilliant. You're a genius. Am I? Ah. For an instant, and the two opposing magnets sent a hurtling back on us. By waiting, the problem has solved itself. Interesting. How are you feeling today? I'm sorry I missed your lecture. I hear it was quite spectacular. How is Mary? When is she coming to visit me? Give her time, Lemuel. This has been very disturbing for her. Will she not even write to me? I'm afraid not. In truth, I think she's frightened of you, of what you've become. I need to see her. I know she'll understand if I can only see her and explain. I think I can change her mind, but... You must play your part as well, and accept that you're not yet well enough to receive visitors. Not today, nor the day after, nor the day after that. Your recovery will take some considerable time. Good morning. Good morning. Your bag was delivered this morning with a note on it from my son. Oh, thank you. How is he? <laughs> well, I have to report that your son has failed all his examinations and is considered to be a complete idiot. Good. There's hope for him yet. Are you a man of great intelligence? I fear not. <gasps> Excellent. Compared to the brain of your husband, the Raja, my intelligence is negligible. He's an imbecile. But an imbecile of breathtaking intellect. What use is a flower to intellect? If my husband had his way, there'd be no flowers. He'd tear them all up to measure their mass, circumference, and volume. Why don't you stay for the summer? Since I married, I've missed the pleasure of unintelligent male company. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could. But I really must try to find the place they call the Academy, where I can get directions home. The Academy? You know of it? Oh, I wish the place had never been built. My husband collected the most brilliant minds from all over the world, and then he installed them at the Academy. Where's the harm in that? They have brought ruin upon this whole country. Everything outside my own estate is devastated. Why? Because the Academy has decided that the perfect new world cannot be constructed 
until the old one has been totally exterminated. I set off for the academy. There was no grand entrance, just a horrible gray slit of a doorway cut into stone. I entered that part where the professors of speculative learning resided. The first place I came across was the School of Language. Oh, come in, come in, sit down, sit down. Now, speaking is, of course, a corrosion of the lungs and to be avoided. So, I have devised a method whereby everyone will carry around all the objects he needs in order to converse and just point at them. Uh, what could be simpler? These two farmers are making a transaction to buy and sell a lamp. No, it's a conversation about the weather. Uh, about whether this farmer can walk his sheep over this other farmer's lamp. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this farmer is furious. Oh, no. Oh, he's delighted he's proposing marriage, I think. Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to find someone who can tell me how to get to England. You see, I have to get home. If you have a question, go to the Room of Answers. I passed through the School of Politics, where three out of four people were informers, accusers, or prosecutors. Look at this. A seemingly innocent note from a boy to his grandfather. My brother Tom has just got the piles. What does that mean? Rearrange the letters. Resist. A plot is brought home. The tour. They were mad. All mad. So obsessed with their own worlds that they had forgotten reality. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is this the room of answers? Ah, you've arrived at last. Here. Put some of these in there. I... I, I, I need to find... I... See, I need... Excuse me, what is it you're doing? What does it look like? I'm extracting sunlight from cucumbers. Just another eight years and I'll have the problem solved. Stay and help. Oh, please stay and help. You can make it so much more exciting. I saw people trying to build houses from the roof downwards, like spiders. I saw one room big as a cathedral, where hogs were being trained to plow fields by digging up buried acorns. Hundreds of professors tackling every problem known to man. But no ideas were finished, and in the meantime, the whole country lay in ruins. Is this the room of answers? Please, I have to know the way home. You know the way home, but you'll never find it. Because deep in your heart, you don't want to. No! That's not true. Get up, you him. It's all right. I'm sure he didn't realize what he was doing. No! No! Down you go. I now found myself in the most desolate place to which my travels had so far brought me. You're insane. Yes, I know. I mean, you're insane to be outside the walls of the academy, unarmed and on foot. If the Strolbrugs had found you before me, you'd be dead by now. Who are the Strolbrugs? They live in the caves, 
beneath the volcano. They're all around us, under our feet. They torture and they kill for their sport. You do better to cut your own throat than let them take you alive. Yes, thank you. I will remember that. I'm the Lord of Blub Dub Drip. My name is Lemuel Gulliver, and I'm trying to find my way home to England. Though I don't suppose you've even heard of me. <laughs> of course I have. I have just ridden back from the port of Maldonado on the other side of the volcano. There's a Dutch vessel there bound for Portsmouth. It sails in a few days. For Portsmouth? Home. Thank you. For tonight, you must be my guest. Oh. Yes. Thank you. You're so lucky that I saw you before the storm books. I bought you some candles. Despite your behavior, I do not approve of this treatment of you. But the other doctors have superiority over me. And they have determined that you spend a week away from human society. A week? No, I, I can't stay a week in here. Believe me, I'm doing everything I can to get you out. You have to, you have to help me to get better. Of course. And you have to trust me. Now, take this. It will help calm you and let you sleep. Just have some whenever you want. Will you bring me paper and some ink? I'm going to write down everything that's happened to me. Why, what a splendid idea. Alas, part of the punishment is to be forbidden these things. And I'll bring you some chalk so you can mark off the days. Now, please, take the medicine. Your health. Do you live alone? Quite alone. I'm an historian, you see. I need the utmost peace to study. An historian. I've always believed the study of history to be the key to all wisdom. I would love to browse through your library. Library? I have no interest in books. I study history purely from the source. But how is such a thing possible? My dear friend, you look very tired. Quite exhausted, in fact. Do have another glass of wine. Forgive my rudeness, but I'm suddenly very tired. I wonder if I might retire for the night. Of course. Take your wine with you. It might help you to sleep. I think there's going to be a storm. Did you sleep through the storm, sir? Must have done. Where's your master? He is resting, sir. He studies at night. He will join you for dinner. Thank you. You mentioned taking me to the port today. Did I? Oh, yes. Sadly, it's not possible. In the storm last night, a fence was broken and my horses escaped. But my servants are out looking for them. They won't have got far. We'll ride to the port tomorrow. Don't worry. I was writing again to your father, and I thought you might like to add a few words. Perhaps you will touch his heart where I can't. Tell him about your silent protest. I'm sure he'll 
recognize his own stubbornness in yours. You can even say how unfair I'm being, if you like. Write what you want. I want him to come home. I wonder, sir, don't think me ungrateful for your hospitality, but I... When do you think we might go to the port? My servants are out looking for the horses. Don't worry. We'll ride there tomorrow. Tell me. When do you think we might go to the port? My servants are out looking for the horses. Don't worry. We'll ride there tomorrow. Did I ask this yesterday? We only arrived yesterday. It always seems to be dinner time. And I always seem to be sitting down and then asking, when do you think we might go to the port? My servants are out looking for the horses. Don't worry. We'll ride there tomorrow. The wine was drugged. That's why I could remember nothing. I drank none of it that night and waited to see what happened. I stand at the gates of life and death. Come forward. Come forward, spirits. Here is life. Alexander the Great, great warrior, leader of men, Smell blood, smell life, I summon you! I'm in the middle of fighting Darius. Who summoned me? I summoned you, great leader. I wish to confirm, in all humility, some small details of your long and illustrious history. Our scholars, for example, record that you met a terrible death by poisoning. No. I died of a fever brought on by excessive drinking. Where do you keep the wine? Wait. Wine? Alexander the Great. I listened spellbound as he boasted about his military genius and his strength and cunning until he got so drunk he fell over. Over the next few nights, I bore witness to the resurrection of the greatest heroes of history. But I must confess, I was astounded to see how many villains had been raised to the highest places of trust, power, dignity, and profit, and how many revolutions in the world were due to the most contemptible accidents. Observing the ease with which these great men of history were summoned, I began to see a way in which I might gain my liberty. Come forward. 
Holy Spirit, come forward. Here's life. Life. Michelangelo, Mark Anthony, Leonardo, I summon you. This is outrageous. You know how difficult it is to make them go back. Socrates, if souls exist after death, there's no reason to suppose they can't exist before birth. Even the Mark Anthony! I command you to return! Cleopatra, you must go back, I beg you. Who's that? One of the Caesars, I think. I'm only trying to alleviate the boredom of my confinement. I declare this territory to be under the direct rule of myself and my Macedonian troops. I sent you back last night. Stay dead this time. Advance. Is there no end? What now? I, I hardly dare say, sir, having seen your rage. Whom have you summoned to? I was curious to question <laughs> Commander Hannibal on his, on his adventures in the Alpine Mountains. Door's locked. I ran from that place. I ran until my lungs were bursting and I thought I would drop dead of exhaustion. How long had I been delayed? I had no way of telling. Would I be able to reach the port before the Dutch boat sailed? Did the port even exist, or was it another fantasy? Yes? Sorry for my bad behavior. Mother says to give this letter to my father. that I take a more active role in your treatment from now on. I've reconstructed my entire journal. But that's wonderful. See, it explains everything that has happened to me. And why, why I feel the way I do. I see you've finished your medicine. We'll have to get you some more. Perhaps a little stronger this time. You must show this to the other doctors. Of course. Clean all this nonsense off the walls immediately. Tom, what are you doing? He's hiding them. He's hiding them. Hiding what? Your letters.
the trespass of our land. Enjoy the view. It's the last time you'll ever see daylight. You're a guest of the immortal Straldbrugs now. Oh, no. No, please, please. I have to, I have to get to the port. It's my last chance to get home. Please. Wait. Wait. There's been some mistake. I was just trying to catch a boat home to England. I was not trespassing. Please let me leave. Crawl forward, you who seek immortality. I, oh, oh, no, no, I, I don't seek it. Grovel before the immortal gatekeeper. What gift have you brought me? I can't quite see. I'm afraid that I haven't brought one. Nothing? You've come before me with no gift at all. It'll take me years to devise the manner of your awful death. Take him away. No, no, wait, wait, I do have something you might like. A giant wasp sting. A wasp sting? In a thousand years, I've never seen such a thing. I didn't expect to see you here. You should have warned me of your visit. This is not a suitable time. How is he today? Well, much the same. You gave him my last letter? Of course, I uh, stood with him as he read it. Your letters mean a great deal to him. I know he reads them many times. Now, Mary, I understand how hard it is for you to stay at home and wait. But if he is really to fully recover, we must trust the doctors. You're a liar. I did what I thought was best. I understand your anger. You do not. Your letters would have upset him further. He's confused. I'm taking him home. Would that it were so simple. But once admitted, he cannot leave without a formal hearing. Then I insist such a hearing takes place. Of course. I have no desire to keep a sane man confined. I'll speak to the senior doctors. We'll do it tomorrow morning. Come and see. One moment. <laughs> I don't anticipate any problem settling the matter. In my grasp, man's greatest desire to cheat death. What must it be like to be immortal? Never dying, never. Can you imagine it? Why, ordinary people must seem like, like flowers, blooming and dying in a few days. Immortality. <laughs> Welcome to the immortal world. This is the source of the life everlasting. Drink from this water and you will never fear death. Never. But I have to get home. There's a ship in the harbor. I only have minutes before it sails. Minutes? What minutes? You have no need for such petty considerations here. I was offered immortality, man's dream. With the fear of death removed, I could, 
I could learn the truths of existence. I could get riches and wisdom. I, I could read every book ever written. Study the movements of the planets and the stars. I could, I could watch the rise and fall of republics and kings. And from the great depths of my knowledge, offer advice to all. I could, I could do anything. It's true. I too have been there and seen what you describe. The Straldbrugs. You have? Then I'm not mad. No. And as I drank, I saw the king riding on a walrus high up in the sky. Oh. What is that? What have you been taking? I don't know. It's 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 medicine. You're a doctor. What are you doing taking something when you don't know what it is? I know what it is. Lord. Drink. Taste immortality. Why is your hand shaking so badly? <coughs> What's wrong with her? Nothing. What's wrong with everyone? Drink the water. You will defy nature. You'll outlive the stars themselves. You'll be like a god. You can't see me, can you? I'm alive. The water keeps us alive. You're blind. You're all blind. No, some of us can still make out shape and movement. We'll never die. That's what matters. We'll never die. 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 That's all that matters. It's cheating death. No. No! I ran like the wind. Below me lay the sea, and the port was surely not far beyond. When I reached the jetty, I leapt, leapt, leapt! I made it! I was going home. Home, finally. England! Surely now, after all, after all the misfortunes I'd suffered, nothing could go wrong. That night, that night I couldn't eat anything. Mary, I need some of my medicine. No, no, you don't. Oh, no. I feel terribly sick. My mouth is all is all red and swollen, and my arms, I can't, I can't lift my arms. So everyone's complaining of the same condition. I don't know if I brought the fever on board, but within a week, it had spread throughout the entire ship. I got sicker and sicker, but I refused to die. I refused to die, not after everything I'd come through. Too warm and then too cold in the same instant. Of the officers, only two others survived. Bodies were just rolled overboard by people too weak to perform a decent ceremony. Everyone stopped working. The ship just drifted, sails down and idle. Mary, I must have some of my medicine. Oh, you're doing so well. In all, we lost over three quarters of our men. We were forced to find a port and take on fresh crew, some, some real rogues. As soon as we were at sea, they, they took over the ship and imprisoned me and the other two officers below decks. It was only a matter of time before they killed us. That night, I escaped and jumped overboard and began to swim. I swam for as long as my strength allowed until finally, at the point of exhaustion, I was cast up on a deserted shore.
you feel this morning? I'm still here, if that's what you mean. Lemuel, you must be honest with me. We're different now. If you no longer care for me, you must simply tell me and, and I will try to understand. Admit to the fantasies you've been having, but say that they're over now and, and they'll let you come home. Are you listening to me? gentlemen we brought before you here today one of our most exceptional patients. Why are all these people here? Why shouldn't they be? The governors of the hospital, the students in medicine. But, but you said nothing about it being in public. Mary, I cannot reorganize the entire workings of the hospital for your convenience. I want to go back to my cell. This place is full of yahoos. What is your name? What? State your full name. Lemuel Gulliver. Now stand up, please, and then perhaps Dr. Bates will inform us a little about your condition. May I say something first? Yes. My husband shouldn't be here. He's an intelligent and professional man, a doctor, then a ship surgeon. Eight years ago, his ship was wrecked, and he was the only survivor, washed up on a, a strange continent, near starving, forced sometimes to drink seawater. He suffered delusions. Without human companionship, he invented people to talk to. Most of us might do the same. Faced with the terror of being totally alone. He's been very sick, but he is a sane man, a good man. And he belongs at home with his family. No, please. 
please, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to offend you. If, if you're a magician, as I think you are, and you've changed yourself into a horse for some reason, I want you to know that I'm... I'm just a poor Englishman. I'm lost and alone, and I, I would like to ride on your back to the nearest village or town. No, wait! Please wait! most unusual cases that it has been my sad privilege to examine here. I have, of course, my own observations about this unique case, but I would prefer that the patient explain a little first in his own words. I'm sure you will find what he has to say instructive. Come, come. This hearing is at your request. Everyone is waiting. What is it to be today? More giants or flying islands? I don't want to say anything. Really? Surely you must have had some more fascinating conversations with Plato or Aristotle. Please don't disappoint us. Nothing to say. Very well. Escort him back to his cell. I don't eat hay. I beg your pardon? I don't eat hay. <laughs> no, thank you. Do you have any milk? <laughs> you know, from, from cows. <laughs> is this where I have to sleep? Well, at least it isn't with those horrible savages. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sleep here. You saw how they tried to attack me. And the smell is unbearable. Well, what if they try to set on me in the middle of the night? Those... those... Yahoo. Yahoo's. Yahoo. Yahoo's. Man. Man. I'm a... M um. Yes. Yes, man. You can talk. What, what sort of being are you? Are, are you a horse? Winnim! Winnim! That's quite enough of that, thank you. Horses that talked, horses that built houses, that milked cows, that kept pets. <laughs> Silence! This is a medical examination, not a theatrical performance. I know that. Any man would laugh at such a story. But listen to me.
before you pass judgment. In the name of reason, which is surely the purpose of this assembly, I ask for your attention. In the name of reason, then, tell us these horses didn't talk. They talked. Over the next few weeks, I struggled to learn and understand the language of the Huynhams. I was a poor student, and Mistress, the mare who first found me, learned to understand my speech far more quickly than I hers. They are the most extraordinary creatures that I or any man has ever met. They have no vices, conflicts, or disagreements. Everything is resolved by the exercise of reason, simple reason. The name Huynhem itself means perfection of nature. You're not here to lecture us, you know, but to be examined. Sit down, if you please. They have a custom, strange at first, that when two of them meet, there should be a short silence before either of them speaks. I found this made me consider what I had to say much more carefully. I tried to offer Mistress some explanation of our society how I was a doctor, trained in the healing of the sick. But she found it hard to understand the concept of disease, something totally absent from the Huynhams Society. I can't even begin to describe to you all the sicknesses possible in the human body. We feed upon a thousand things which work against each other. We, we eat when we're not hungry. We drink strong liquor without the provocation of thirst. Often when I spoke to her thus, Mistress seemed uneasy finding it hard to believe my words. When I tried to explain what I meant by lying, she was shocked. She told me the gift of speech was to make us understand one another, to receive information. And if anyone said the thing which is not a lie, then that purpose, gentlemen, was defeated. Sir, what is your implication? None, sir. I merely point out that she could conceive of no reason or purpose to lying something which is so perfectly understood and so universally practiced among human creatures. It was with the greatest difficulty that I could make her understand what I meant by power, government, and war. Law and punishment and a thousand other things had no equivalents in their language. Horses in my country are like yahoos in yours. We keep them as beasts of burden. We put plates of iron on their feet so they can walk on our stony roads and saddles so they can be ridden. By yahoos. They have no choice. Horses are usually broken and tame when they're very young. The males are generally castrated when they're two years old to take down their spirits. If they show any disobedience, they are beaten with a whip or kicked with spurs. We use them to pull heavy loads or to plow our fields. Rich ladies ride them round parks, and sometimes we race them for our entertainment. And when they get too old to work or to be ridden for fun, they are butchered, skinned, and sold for dog meat. And what's wrong with that? What is your argument, sir? I think the proposition being advanced is that this society of horses is superior to our own. Is that your suggestion, sir? I'm not suggesting it. I'm insisting on it. <laughs> seem to have no virtues whatsoever. In the Quinnum language, there is no word for evil, but everything that is bad has Yahoo added to it. There are a lot of such words. Fortunately, the Quinnums could see no resemblance between my own outward appearance and that of the brutish Yahoos until one morning. Yahoo! Hmm. Yahoo! No, no. No, I'm not a Yahoo. These... These are my clothes. They cover my body. Everyone in my country wears clothes. Hmm. Why? Well, but because of modesty. Imagine if men and women went around naked all the time. We'd be... Well, we'd be preoccupied with sex. Yahoo! 
No, 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 we're, we're civilized. We wear clothes to, well, clothes tell you how, how important someone is. If you're wealthy, you wear clothes of rare flimsy material like silk or, or lace that need to be cleaned constantly by servants. And of course, you buy new clothes all the time because, well, obviously for a lady to be seen wearing the same dress more than once would be unpardonable. I don't have any dresses, of course, because, well, I'm, I'm a man and men don't wear dresses. I, oh, dear. Can we, can we change the subject? Are you telling us, sir, that this horse friend of yours did not understand the need for clothes? Precisely. <laughs> do you? What do you mean by that? Why should we not be seen as God made us? Because, as every Christian knows, it would be immodest. Meaning that these ladies and gentlemen would be incapable of modest behavior if they were not wearing clothes? That they would be yahoos? Some of the Whinnams agreed with you, sir. They were now concerned that I was really a yahoo and should be treated as one. I told Mistress that if she would spend a few days with me in a study of these creatures, it would become quite apparent that I had no more in common with them than she did, and we could clear up this confusion once and for all. Day one, leadership. In each herd, there was some kind of ruling yahoo. As the basis of any society is organization, I wondered how the yahoos picked this leader. Whereas in our country, we seek to elect the most intelligent amongst us, the yahoos picked a leader more mischievous in disposition than the rest. This leader would then choose a favorite, as much like himself as possible, whose job it was to lick his master's feet in posterior and drive the female yahoos to his kennel. What are you implying? He would continue in office until an even worse candidate could be found, at which point he would be discarded. And all the yahoos in the district would come and discharge excrement upon him from head to foot. I am warning you. Day two, aggression. The bestial yahoos would fight for no reason at all. Whereas, as I explained to Mistress, in our society, we only fight for a very good reason indeed. Such as, well, because our enemies are much weaker than us, or we desire all their land. Day three, mating. I fear I may shock you with my personal experience of their practices, but I believe it's vital that you share my deep revulsion at the antics of our neighbors. I had already observed that the red-haired males and females of the species were more highly sexed than the rest. So I should have been on my guard. It was a scorching hot day, and I thought the Yahoo heard and moved on. So I decided to take advantage of the cool water. me beyond the violence itself was the thought that I could be mistaken by a female on heat for another Yahoo. Could I deny my true nature any longer? Was this the real man, a brute? When I caught sight of myself in the lake, I wanted to turn away in disgust. I've had enough of this nonsense. I, I think we know enough. The following day, up. there came a terrible temptation. Mistress took me further down the seashore to a cliff I'd never visited before, where the Yahoos were digging stones out of the clay. She explained how the Yahoos coveted these strange rocks and asked me why.
my country, they're called diamonds. What are they for? I have no idea. Primitive people like shiny things. They have no value. None whatsoever. <laughs> liar. What a liar I was. That night I made a crude pick from a flint head. I crept out of the compound straight back to the quarry. All night long I, I hacked away to get at the diamonds. Do you know why I left my wife to go to sea? Do you? Because I couldn't earn enough as a doctor at home. I had to take a surgeon's wages from a shipping company. And here I was in this strange country holding a fortune in my hands. I never have to work again. I'm rich. Rich. I can have anything I want. But what did I want? Since my journey began, I'd thought of only one thing. Home. Of waking up again in my own bed with my wife and all the things that I knew around me. And now I was rich enough to give Mary everything. Except I couldn't leave. Now that I could have anything I wanted, I knew with absolute certainty all I wanted was to stay here. I would rather live with these Wynnum than with my own wife. Without other people, I found that I had lost all my vices. There was no one to envy or lust after or steal from or flatter or brag or lie to. And if I left this place now, what could happen except my corruption? That's my grand country house. That's my fine clothes. And the servants to dress me. And my hunting and my fishing and my vintage wines. Because I'm never going back. I'm going to become a winner. That night I slept with a peace I hadn't experienced for years. I didn't hear the yahoos creep up and steal my clothes. I didn't even hear the destruction until it was too late. Yahoos on the rampage. They'd found a trough of fermenting apples and had drunk the lot, then charged through the settlement, smashing everything in their path. Wynnum Council quickly reached its irrevocable judgment. I must leave them forever. Until I left, I must remain with my own kind. do I have? Until the full moon. Mistress! Is that it then? Am I really just another Yahoo in the end? Am I? Am I just another animal? I worked long days. Now I had resolved to leave, the sooner the better. I built a small boat of skins, and as the day to leave grew near, loaded it up with vegetables, rabbits I had caught, and other provisions for the journey. We love words, we humans. 
We use so many so easily until they've lost all their meaning. But when I say, as that last day dawned, my heart was breaking. I have never known such awful pain and loneliness. You are more Queen than Yahoo. As I sailed off, the Quinnums cried out to me from the beach. I didn't turn to look. It was a sound that will stay with me for the rest of my life. When I could no longer see land, I threw all my food overboard. I decided not to try and return home. I couldn't live with humans again. After many hours, a shadow came across my boat, and I realized that death had come to claim me. I stayed in my cabin the entire voyage, talking to no one. I ate the foul Yahoo food only to survive, and I washed myself whenever I touched anything, until I reached England. This really is the most extraordinary story, coupled with Dr. Bates's other notes. I've never heard a story like it. When my husband came here, he was very disturbed. And I think he's being encouraged to believe his fantasies really existed. But that's over now. He's purged himself. Lemuel is not insane. I want him to come home. And I know that is his wish also. You say your husband is not insane? Then do you believe his account of these fantastical stories? I believe he has suffered greatly. But do you believe him? It is a simple question. I, I believe he has much to teach us if we would listen. I ask you again, do you believe him or not? Who in this room has been harmed by him? You ask me if I believe him. And my answer is this. I believe in him. I believe Lemuel is a truly good man. I believe he's an honest man. And I believe his journey has made him a better man. Tell me the crime he has committed that merits this terrible punishment. What if his stories are true? What if they're not? What does it matter? He had a thirst, a raging, unquenchable thirst to see the world and drink everything in it. And now that thirst is quenched. And perhaps he has drunk more than any man could swallow. But who are we to judge him? Who are we? to doubt his word and compel him to remain here. You have asked your questions, and now I ask mine. Who 
in this room has been harmed by him. He is harming himself. And it is our Christian duty to keep him here until we cure him. Your motives for keeping him here are anything but Christian. How dare you? How dare you question me? He's insane. He must be kept locked up. He's a lunatic, gibbering against mankind, tearing down all shreds of decency and modesty, filthy in word and filthy in thought. There's a heart burning with hatred against the whole human race and a mind fueled with images from the dunghill. Are we to stand by and hear our whole nature libeled and besmirched? I have tried only to speak the truth as I saw it. What arrogance, what presumption to show men what they are and to teach them what to be. You are either a liar, sir, or a lunatic. Which is it? Gentlemen! Gentlemen, this is a hospital, not a prison. And our ambition is not to confine people, but to cure them. Lemuel Gulliver, you are clearly suffering from a disease of the mind. This journey never really happened, except in your own head. And all we ask is that you acknowledge this. When you have done that, then you may leave. Now, what do you say? Then I may leave. Of course. That's all you have to say, Lemuel. Every single thing I have told you is the truth and happened to me. Why do you persist? You say you saw all these things that no one else has ever seen, been to all these fantastical places. Have you one shred of proof? I did have The answer is no. He has no proof. Isn't it enough that I say they're the truth? No, no, it is not enough. We shall review your case next year at the same time. Keepers, take him back to his tent. No, listen to me. I am telling you the truth. Why won't anyone believe me? Who is this child? Thomas, what are you doing here? Go back to your mother, boy. I thought he'd gone. But he was in the garden eating grass. I found him again this morning. I saw Bates again. I heard somewhere that he had gone abroad, but I don't know if it's true. The house is still in his name, but he never returned to claim it. The first money I laid out when I returned home was to buy two young horses. They understand me tolerably well, and I converse with them every day. It was many months before I could look in a mirror without feeling some disgust at the sight of a human creature. But my family let me walk at my own pace and showed me a kindness that is perhaps greater than reason might allow. Until at last I was able to play with my son Tom like a true father. 
and be again a husband to my wife Mary, to whom I owe my life and freedom. All the Yahoo vices I can begin to accustom myself to once more, except for pride. That I cannot tolerate. I see myself for what I truly am. I have lost eight years of my life, and yet, and yet the moments I have had, the marvels I have witnessed, the wonderful truths I have seen. You see, when night falls and you close your eyes to sleep and dream, I have seen the things that you can only dream about. I have been there. I was lost at sea for a long time, but I have been there. Oh yes, all the way and back.